my sister's Little Beaver Scout. It's the Tom Likas Show. Yes, of course. I love Little Beavers. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show with a fantastic email from a listener named Ronald, who's right here in our backyard in Torrance. Ronald writes in, it says, Tom, when I am unable to listen to your show, I generally listen to sports radio. What do you mean when you're unable to listen? The show is available to you every single day. Why, why would you be unable to listen? Sports radio. Boy, oh boy. He says, I don't know if it is just me. But I hate when I turn on sports talk and there is a woman filling in on the show. <laughs> he says, I find this to be true, even when I watch a game on TV. I don't doubt that some have the ability to broadcast sports. But it seems to me that most don't have the proper sports acumen to perform the job. By the way, I'm going to say another thing about this. Let me... Let me uh, add something to what Ronald is saying here. Not only is that true, if they don't have sports acumen, at least they can have a nice pair of gazongas. You know what I'm saying? Something to look at. I mean, most of these women, save for Pam Oliver, boy, I'd like her to ride me like a pony. I'll tell you what, that Pam Oliver. But other than that, these women are homely. They're not even like plain. They're homely. They're the fugs. Jesus. So you got these fugly chicks reporting from the sidelines. And, and you know the main reason they do it is just to get chicks into the game. Just to get chicks on TV. And their hope that women will also watch sports. It isn't to please the guys, because I think what Ronald is saying is correct. I don't think guys like seeing chicks uh, appearing on sporting events. And I don't think we like them filling in on sports talk shows either. He says, it's gotten to the point that I will change the TV station and always change the radio station. After some thought, I figured out what my problem is. I don't want to listen to more women talk. I'm sure that a lot of married men talk to their wives and girlfriends like I do. But when I don't have to, I don't want to listen to women talking about something that I enjoy without women being around. What do you think? You know, that's actually true. How many men watch sports to get out of the house? You know, when you go to Hooters... When you go to the ESPN zone, when you go to your local sports bar, many of the guys there are, well, first of all, they look like beaten dogs. Okay. They have gotten out of the house to watch college sports or to watch pro sports so they can get away with, from the women they're with. To sit in a women free environment. Many of us, when we are home, we close the door. How many of you have like a den or you have a room with a TV where you close the door so you can't hear the vacuum and you can't hear her complaining? You just close the goddamn door. You want her out of there. So the last thing you want to see are chicks on TV who are not absolutely hot. I mean, come on. You know, let, let's tell the truth. Wouldn't you rather see uh, Jim Gray or Craig Sager than Michelle Tafoya on the sidelines? Seriously. And, um, you know, many times you see chicks doing sports on TV, and they're either lesbians or they look like lesbians, and there's nothing wrong with being a lesbian. In fact, I think a lesbian sports network would be a great idea. Put all the lesbians on there. And then appeal to lesbians. You could have the exclusive rights to the WNBA games. And all the other stuff lesbians like watching. I think that would be fantastic. I think it would be great. You know, but when guys are watching the NFL, we don't want to see plain looking or worse chicks on the sidelines reporting. 
<laughs> on sports, even if they know what they're talking about. We don't want to see it. We don't want to see them. Uh, Gary has uh, forwarded to me uh, <laughs> a list called the definitive list of unattractive female sports reporters. It's from a website called Tailgating Ideas. And uh, there's a whole list of these women on there. Now, th this person also does not even like Pam Oliver. So this person really doesn't like watching women on TV. Bonnie mentions uh, Jeannie's Alasco. You know, she talks like a guy that Jeannie just loves Alasco. And always has those acrylic nails that really annoy me. She does have big cans. Though. She does have big cans. There's no doubt she has big cans, but, you know, it, she's a butterface. And uh, many women try to make up for their lack of face uh, with acrylic nails, thinking we somehow won't notice the face. Stop with that, please. Michelle Tafoya, there's a very unflattering picture of Michelle Tafoya here, where her face looks like a pumpkin. She looks like Rush Limbaugh's uh, illegitimate spawn here. Except she's almost Rush's age, I couldn't be. And then Andrea Kramer. Oh, yeah, another another two-bagger. Linda Cohn. Now, Linda Cohn, you may be surprised to know, grew up two blocks from me. I went to school with her sister, Irene. Irene? Eileen. It's Eileen. Eileen Cohn. And they are from, uh, literally, if you look up uh, <laughs> if you look up Linda Cohn, you can do it. Go to Wikipedia, look up Linda Cohn. It'll tell you that she grew up in Selden, New York, which is where I lived for seven years with my family. That's where she's from. But uh, holy cow. What are they? By the way, they had to do something to her face to make her like... You notice her face, Jade? How she had a facelift or her eyes done? They did something to her. Just so you could look at her. Because my opinion of her was always, I can't even look at this chick. I can't even look at her. It's just the way it is. Uh, there's a picture of Leslie Visser, another one. By the way, we're calling her the elder stateswoman of the bunch. <laughs> and then he's got a bunch that are from, uh, like, smaller, I guess, TV markets. Some of them are from uh, college uh, sports that I don't even watch. Here is a woman named Holly Rowe. I've never seen her. She says here she, she does events like the College World Series. He says, um, this is the guy who uh, wrote the blog. He says, a microphone in her hand is the only thing that distinguishes her from all the other fluffy, corn-fed Midwestern girls. <laughs> and then it says here, bonus clip, here is Holly covering, who else? The hogs. Holly's a uh, larger woman. <laughs> anyway, I, I do believe that our letter writer uh, makes sense here. Uh, like it or not, even if you think it's sexist, I really don't care. We really have no interest in seeing women on the sidelines. We don't have any interest in hearing women play-by-play -play announcers. The New York Yankees have a radio play-by-play -play announcer named Susan Waldman, who also talks like a man. If you're going to get a woman who talks like a man, why not get a man? <laughs> Just awful. Just awful. Unlistenable. And I'm wondering, uh, if, uh, am I the only one who feels this way? Uh, how do you feel about women sportscasters and women sports talk hosts? What do you think about that? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas Show. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. Right, how do you feel about seeing women doing sports? TV? Hearing them on the radio? What do you think? Erica on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm a long time listener, first time caller. And I long got to tell time you listener, first time caller. 
<laughs> I gotta tell you, I love you. I don't always agree with everything you say, but I love you. My, uh, just you. a comment on these women on the NFL. What the hell are they doing on? Get them off the TV. <laughs> they don't belong in man's sport. And the only reason that I watch college football or the NFL is because my husband is very much a man's man and loves football. So to spend a little time with him, I sit and watch. And I hate it when these women come on and they talk and it's like, they, I mean, they may know what they're talking about, but really they don't belong on the damn TV. <laughs> yeah, well, I agree with you. Yeah, and, and they need to get hot women. If they're going to get them on, get, they need to have hot women. Some of these women are just not pretty to look at. No, they're not. And, and let's face it, guys are the primary viewers and they should give the guys what they want to see. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. Anyway, thanks, Tom. Thank you, Erica. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Neil's on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. I've been listening to your show just a few weeks. I've absolutely fallen in love with it. Thank you. Hey, I, uh, I keep on the sports scene, and I'm always watching sports, and every time I see a woman on the damn show, it, it makes me double take. It's such an unnatural thing. It's just, it's guys, 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 and then you get a woman in there. It's just not right. It's not, not for me. <laughs> well, exactly. It's just sports are, sports are a men's thing. You got to keep them out of there. Well, I, I just, again, the purpose of it is to get guys to watch. What guy tunes in to see Michelle Tafoya? Not a single one. <laughs> Bottom line. Yep. Anyways, that's all I wanted to say. Can you take me out with a bong rip followed by blow me up? Here you go. Charlene on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Tom, you need to get over your hang-ups, you and your male callers. What does it matter if it's female or male? As long as they know what they're talking about. Uh, it does matter. Why? Well, first of all, uh, as the letter writer said, and I agree with him, not all of them do know what they're talking about. Uh, and secondly, uh, we just don't want to see it. We're watching sports to get away from women, not to see women. You still haven't said why it makes a difference if they know what they're talking about. I agree with you. If they don't know what they're talking about, fine. But if they do, what does it matter? You, you go it's to TV. TV. You want to put women on a sporting event? Put hot women. But why? What if the hot woman doesn't know what she's talking about? Uh, you, you, because she's still a hot woman. At least there's something to look at. So you're telling me that's all men think about. That's all we you guys think Yes. About. All right. So now, by the know. way, none of us believe that the women on there know what they're talking about, even when they do. Say that again? <laughs> we don't believe they know what they're talking about, even when they do know what they're talking about. But that's because you can't get over your hang-up. But that's how we feel. And by the way, the whole purpose of putting on a television show is to get people to tune in. That's the purpose of it. Like, we put this show on here so that, that uh, we can get listeners. That's the purpose of it. And we're not here to prove a point or to liberate people. We're not here to be fair. We're here to get the most listeners we can. Do you have statistics that show that when you've got a female sportscaster, the ratings are lower? Uh, put it this way, I don't have any such numbers. I only have anecdotal evidence when I talk to men, like the letter writer who wrote in. We don't want to see women on sportscast. By the way, women don't want to see them either, like the first caller we had this hour. Well, maybe that woman, but I don't mind. If the person knows they're talking about, they're entertaining, so I don't care. And that's the way I feel about most things. It doesn't matter. Well, again, family. you're not, uh, like I always say about this program, you're not the primary audience. You're not the target demographic. Well, that's for sure. And so, therefore, it shouldn't matter whether you like it. What matters is whether the target audience likes it. Well, I don't know. I mean, I only listen to you just to see, you know, how many things I can disagree with you on. But, but it doesn't matter what reason you tune in. What matters is that you do tune in. True, but that's because there's no other talk show I like to tell my way home. Well, but uh, that makes us the best, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, I hate to but yeah, I do listen to you. There you go. Well, I said my piece, Tom. By the way, before you go, Talene, uh, why don't you hear what Gina has to say, and then you can respond to her. Gina, tell Talene what you were going to tell me. 
I was going to tell you that I'm a recent, uh, I love football all of a sudden. The guys got me on the polls at work. I, I put in a couple bucks all the time. I go home and watch TV. I want to see men, not women. I don't want to see Jeannie Velasco. I want to see guys, nice buff guys watching football because that's what football's all about, you know? It's a sport for guys. If you're going to watch it with the guys, then be, you know, uh, partake in what the guys are doing. I don't want to see women. I... If I want to see women, I'll look at myself. I'm hot enough. I want to see guys. What do you think, Talene? Um, it makes it makes sense to me, like most of your callers. Uh, uh, you know, but you I, are one of the callers. You know what I mean? The, the callers that agree with you, Tom. Those callers. Oh yes. <laughs> right. So, so you're yeah. saying that everything Gina says is uh, invalid? Well, you know, listen. If you, if you want to analogize, you know. It, if you go in your, your you go to a hospital and your nurse is a, a male, I mean, does it does it mean he doesn't know what he's talking about or that? No, I mean, it's just this. It's all occupations. I just think that if you know what you're doing, it shouldn't matter. But again, you know, you're talking about males that only care about you know what they're seeing in front of them, and apparently females that feel the same way. It's just sex sexism, really. You think Gina is sexist? Probably. <laughs> Do you oh, know my what? God, not at all. I mean, I am a 45-year-old woman. I weigh 110. I got all the measurements there is. I am not sexist. I'm telling you, I like watching men. And, I mean, it, there's nothing sexist about looking at great-looking guys on TV. I don't want to see Jeannie Velasco. You know, she's reading know a prompter. prompter. Anybody can read a prompter. I want to see the guys read the prompter, not Jeannie Velasco. Absolutely not. <laughs> no way. And by the way... The the last the World Series game two nights ago Saturday night was the lowest rated World Series game in history. Who's to say what the ratings would have been if they were hosted by a guy? Who's to say? Probably the same. Well, that, that you're speculating. I I wouldn't pretend to know the answer. I know, and, and you but you have to admit it's possible. You have to admit it's possible. Thank you, girls. Now, Susie Colbert is one of the women I referred to here, and uh, Susie Colbert had that momentous interview. Remember when she interviewed uh, Joe Namath? Joe Namath was drunk. And Susie Colbert <laughs> interviewing Joe Namath. Was, this is one of the classics. Joe, it's been a tough season for Jet fans. What does it mean to you now when the team is struggling? I want to kiss you. I couldn't care less about the team struggling. What we know is we can improve. Chad missed Chad Pennington, our quarterback, missed the first part of the season, and we struggled. We're looking to next season. We're looking to make a, a noise now, and I want to kiss you. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> yeah. Huge compliment. Yeah, you know Joe Namath, part of the four-decade team. We'll see these guys at halftime. All right. Thank you, Susie. Joe's just a happy guy. Isn't he? He's just a happy guy. Oh, boy, is he happy. some of Susie Colbert's fine work. She got that exclusively. Didn't you give the guy a breathalyzer before you put him on? What are you doing? One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. How do you feel about chicks doing sports? What do you think about this, John? On the Tom like his show. Hello. Hi Tom. Uh, this is not only happening in uh, stick and ball sports, but uh, it's a really irritating trend that's starting to happen in auto racing, uh, specifically on NASCAR events. I'm a huge auto racing fan, uh -huh. and I've, no I've noticed this the past couple years. Um, they're getting these really irritating bimbo reporters that talk like a valley girl. And uh, when they start talking, I just start imitating them and talking over them and uh, making fun of them. And I don't hear anything they say. And uh, they are replacing well-qualified males such as uh, John Kernan, who worked the pits of NASCAR races for years. They got him doing drag racing now. And uh, he's a very articulate individual. And I don't understand why men like him are sitting on the sidelines at home when uh, really irritating bimbos are doing these races. Um, I, you, you know, you're absolutely right, because uh, we're also NASCAR fans here. And I, I, I'll, I'll give you another one. Do you remember uh, when Channel 5, many years ago, they had a guy named Ed Arnold, been on there for 30 years doing sports? That's replaced by Claudia. And we got replaced by Claudia Trejos, the woman who... Uh, had issues with English, her accent, and not only that, knew what appeared to be next to nothing about sports. 
I do remember reading all this about her, and she was brilliant on Telemundo, but uh, horrible in English. <laughs> yeah. I did watch her, you know, on Telemundo. <laughs> yeah, but uh, holy cow. Just so they could get a Latina chick in there. That, that was all that was about. Yeah, that, that's horrible. That's absolutely awful. Well, thank God that uh, Formula One is still all male, and, uh, you know, drag racing is still all male broadcasting. But uh, an open wheel like like Indy cars and NASCAR, this this is just an uh, ongoing trend. It's just horrible. You make a good point. Thanks for the call. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom like is one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. The Tom Likus Show. Tom like his show at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. I can tell again. Alyssa wrote in and said he hates hearing chicks on sporting events on TV or sports talk radio. What do you think, Steve? On the Tom like his show, hello. Hey Tom, how you doing today, brother? Doing great, Steve. Uh, I'm doing great too because I get to talk to my godfather right you now. You betcha, baby. And I'll tell you what, Tom, you know, what's confusing me a little bit is I listen to the show and I hear everybody talking about how much they dislike this or dislike that. You know, I'm a 43-year-old guy, grew up in the San Fernando Valley, been a sports fan all my life, watched baseball, football, basketball, hockey since the 1980 Olympics, everything. I could care less who's reporting it. All the women are idiots. All the guys reporting it are idiots. All the sponsors are idiots. All the networks are idiots. So who cares? Who's reporting what? I ain't getting paid for what they're doing. All I'm doing is watching it. I'm watching it for the athletes. I'm not watching it for the announcers. So I could care less who's announcing it. Most of the time, I put music on and I'm not even listening to the Moron. You know what I'm saying, Father? <laughs> yeah, I know what you're saying. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's Robert on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Is that a question or a statement? It's a question. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I agree with uh, one exception, man. Susie Colbert, man. Woo! I want that. She sound. She she sounds like she knows what she's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she just has that passion, like, yeah, like, oh, this has happened, and she just gets me turned on. I don't know what it is, man. Really? Do you, know, you know what I'm talking about? Well, uh, no. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. I know what it means to be turned on, but I've I've never even gotten a, a mild rise out of watching Susie Colbert. Susie. Yeah, she used to have, like, that lesbo look. With the short hair, now she grew out of her hair, and now she's kind of, like, she's kind of hot now, and I'm really into her now, and baby, yummy. Mm, I want that. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom Albert on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Baby. He hello, Albert. Listen, I think this uh, trend started back in San Francisco when that lady—I don't know her name—it's Pac Bell Park now started announcing all the San Francisco baseball players coming up the bat. Uh, yes, her name is, uh, what is it? She's got three names. One of her names is Moon. I can't yeah. remember her whole name. But she's a disc jockey in San Francisco. Yeah. yeah, I don't think anybody wanted to hear that. And my second point, Tom, was uh, Lisa Guerrero, I think you're all forgetting, was the biggest piece of ass sideline reporter ever. But before, you'll, notice uh, she's not, you'll notice she's not working and that I know of. Where, where is she? You know, the last time I saw her was uh, reporting an Inside Edition somewhere. Oh, there you go. But uh, she's got she's got uh, huge knockers, just absolutely over the top. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Tom. Thank you. Thank you, Albert. Appreciate the call. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Lee on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Great. Long-time listener, first-time caller. I've been listening to you since I moved here from where? From New York, man. There we go. Was that 12, 12 seconds? seconds. Not bad. Hey, uh, here's, <laughs> here's my point. Here's my point. I'm throwing out the Susie Colbert comment because I just about barked on the 405. But uh, the issue with the sportscast is let's break down the game film of that interview with Susie Colbert and Namus. They always ask the athletes what they're thinking. I want introspective sports reporting. I don't want somebody asking 
how someone feels. That's why these interviews are so boring. Well, I, uh, many of these sideline interviews uh, contain no information, whether it's uh, done by men or women. At least when you get somebody like Jim Gray. Jim Gray sees himself as an investigative reporter. Sure. And <laughs> he's always looking to stir up the pot, and he's always looking for any piece of dirt he can find, and I love it. Uh, Ken Rosenthal, who does baseball on Fox, is a kind of a nicer version of Jim Gray. He's also like an investigative reporter. But Jim Gray loves stirring up the crap. You know, he just loves it. And I love watching him do it, too. Uh, Craig Sager is uh, a buffoon, but also he gets good interviews. And you know what? The guy does a good interview. Uh, I just have to close my eyes because I get blinded by his suit. Uh, but uh, the thing is, the chicks who are on there, I really, other than that Susie Colbert interview, do you remember any, any uh, interviews that chicks have done on sporting events? No, I mean, the old days, and like Jane Kennedy was it, who was on the NFL before, but that's been so long ago. What is that, 20 years ago? Yeah. This doesn't happen anymore. Oh, is that the name, Dean? Rennell Brooks Moon. That's the name of the San Francisco Giants PA announcer. There you go. Who is also the midday chick at whatever it is. She has a morning show? And what's the yeah. station? Kiss FM in, in San Francisco. They have a Kiss FM in San Francisco? I didn't know about 98.1. 98.1, Kiss FM. They have a chick doing the morning show? Wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our, I knew she was a jock. I knew that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Leo on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Father. How are you doing? How are you doing? I'm doing all right. Hey, uh, you know, I was sitting here listening to this, and uh, I kind of tuned in a little bit late, but I'm sitting here thinking, you know, I don't want to see a female on any sports show. Unless they're getting naked, I don't want to see them. You know, it just like as if my wife was going to Victoria's Secret, she don't want to have a man helping her. If she's going shoe shopping, she doesn't want to Right. Her. So, I mean, if they're, not, if they're not willing to take advice from a man with shoes and lingerie, why do I want to hear a woman talking about home runs or... Or slap shots. You know, it ain't going to happen. I don't want to hear it. I agree with you. It just doesn't make any sense to me. You know, if it, if they want the females on the show, they should put them over in the corner and let them, let them dance around and let them, let them get our attention. But, you know, when it comes to facts and stuff, I want to hear someone who's played the sport or at least knows what it feels to play the sport. Yeah, well, I'd, uh, we'll put it this way. Or somebody who spent his entire life watching sports on TV would be good enough. Exactly. At least they have an idea of what they're talking about. The females, they jump in and they just want to act smart, or at least think they're smart. Yeah, I hate that. <laughs> Thank you, Leo. All right, will you take me out with a screaming orgasm? Yes, I will. Oh, oh, God. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Charlie on the Tom Like His Show, hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Charlie. So the only time I would want to see women while I'm watching sports is during the Girls Gone Wild commercials and the Victoria's Secret commercials. <laughs> That's the only time. I mean, seriously, how would they feel if Martha Stewart's show was hosted by Tom Likas Living? <laughs> it's horrible. That's exactly right. I don't want to see it. Like, Maybe I should be the booth announcer on Oprah Winfrey. Exactly. That's the whole thing. Like the day Oprah that needs a sidekick. I should come on there and like be her sidekick. Exactly. Didn't Danny Zadavucci did like a view, but it was like for women, but it was hosted by men. That failed. Right. Well, it was supposed. Originally, they said it was going to be for men, and somehow it ended up like everything else on television being for women. Everything else on daytime television, exactly. Everything on television. Everything on television these days is for women. But yeah, it's horrible. I mean, we don't go on their turf. Don't go on our turf. That's right. Exactly. Hey, can you take me on number nine or private dancer style, either one? Yes, yes, I can. Number nine. The remorse I feel will always be with me. From those to whom much is given, much is expected. Number nine, number nine, number nine, number nine. We're talking about chicks on the sports cast, on TV, uh, football games, sideline reporters, sports talk radio. What do you think about that? Let's say hello here to Aaron. On the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, Tom, what's going on? This is uh, Aaron. I, I've only listened to you recently, but uh, I have to say I, I'm loving what I'm hearing from your show. Uh, my opinion really is that, frankly, I don't really care that much if it's, you know, 
man or woman as long as they if they if they ask good questions as long as they really sort of fit their purpose there. Um, you know, I really am a person who thinks sideline reporting almost really shouldn't happen because really the information that they dig up isn't really worthwhile. Well, and most of it could be read by the play-by-play -play guy. They could just slip it in front of him. Exactly. Uh, they, exactly. The whole idea of having a sideline reporter is stupid. I agree with you. And, you know, I mean, I can't, and I also, I mean, I can't give fault, if, you know, if, if it's a woman, a reporter, an analyst, if she's done her homework, say like uh, that girl Jamila Wright from ESPN uh, uh, that does first and ten, if she sits up there and says, well, you know, uh, the Dallas Cowboys, for instance, told, uh, you know, Jason Witten, uh, you know, uh, took advantage of the soft center and the Tampa 2 defense against the Buccaneers, well, that's how you beat the Tampa 2 in a lot of cases. So if she brings that point up, I can't fault her for that. It's the other people that bring up this sort of pointless garbage. And, and in some senses, I do agree with you with Jim Gray and Craig Sager. The only problem is, like with Jim Gray, in, in his attempt to sort of pry out information, uh, and a lot of times he comes up empty, and that's what bothers me because you get this awkward sort of, uh, of, of interview or silence and this weird sort of... Uh, well, because what you're seeing is what you never read in a newspaper. You know, when newspapers reveal all kinds of dirt, yeah. you don't know how many times the reporter asked the same question or got an awkward answer or a long silence. All you see is the result of the work. Uh, when Jim Gray is on TV live, you are seeing the work of an investigative reporter uh, as it's being done. And many of that stuff is, uh, many of those things are not really ready for print or ready for broadcast. So, so you're seeing him doing his job live. And, 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 that, and that's true. And I mean, I totally understand that. I guess my issue with Jim Gray is that uh, even though he is more of a seasoned reporter, he goes about it in an awkward way. I think there are ways that he could get the information much smoother and not have such awkward interviews. And I mean, you know, that goes with any reporter that, you know, with experience. I mean, I, and I think that goes with what you, you said before. You know, reporting really should start with people who have experience in the sport, whether it's coaching it or playing it, and, you know, they're comfortable in, in front of, you know, uh, the camera or the players involved. I mean, that's really one of the, that's really the main reason why you have women sideline reporters is I believe they feel that they're less likely to get chipped on, on interviews at the sideline. You know, male players are less likely to uh, to avoid them and give them the cold shoulder. But I think they're also like less that. likely to give them uh, real answers to real questions. Tom like is 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-8666. The Tom Likas yeah, like Show. Is. The Tom Likas Show coming to you from Hollywood at one 800 tom Chicks on sports broadcast. What do you think? William on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yeah, man. I think... Uh, what's going on, Tom? Not much, William. Hey, man. Thanks uh, for all your advice. It definitely helped. Sure. You know, I just think the American people have it wrong, man. I think uh, one thing that the Latin people know how to do is sports TV. If you ever turn on Telemundo on a Saturday or Sunday, all you see is chicks on bikinis. I by, have by the show. way, I got to I do watch Telemundo, and they've got hot chicks all day long, up to and including that soap opera at night that they uh, stole from Columbia. Yeah, you know the one I'm talking about. Uh, no, I don't. I don't watch soap operas. But you I'm got to. No, if you are not watching the novella at ten o'clock on uh, Channel Fifty Two in L.A., you're missing out. Oh, my grandma, she that's all she watches. But, well, you know, if your grandma's watching this, she's a much more liberal woman than you thought. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, at, uh, on Saturday and Sunday, you, you you see them, like, scream go, and then you see, like, the chicks jumping up and down. Yes. And, yeah. Yes, and they've always got huge knockers. Yes, I've, yeah. I've, yes, I believe me, I have tuned in. Yeah, that's what they need to do. I don't really care about the sport, per se. Uh, in fact, I was just watching a soccer game on Telemundo Saturday night. Oh, yeah? Yes. Yes, I was. And, in fact, the budget on this broadcast was so low, the two announcers, they were sitting in a studio in L.A. Uh, reporting on a game from Mexico. They were watching it on TV just like I was. 
Oh man! They didn't even they didn't even get to go to the event. They just sit there in the studio. That sucks. Yeah, I know, but it's a very low budget network, as as you may know. But they do have hot chicks from the first weather forecast in the morning <laughs> throughout the entire broadcasting day. They absolutely do. They keep the broad in broadcasting. Excel. It, it definitely does. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, it's John on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hi. Right. Here's what I think's going on. Unfortunately for the sophisticated sports fan like you, the broadcasters, the major broadcasters, are appealing to the more casual fan. I guess kind of like me, where I'm not really going to remember what the sideline reporter was talking about after the game. So I guess given the choice, I'd rather see the super hot chick in the tight sweater. But they don't the... have super hot chicks. That's my point. Uh, they, they've, they've got homely chicks or average-looking chicks or butterfaces. They, who are the hot chicks? Well, that, I mean, so then, there's the problem. They're, they're looking for that elusive holy grail of sideline reporter who's, like, hot but still knows the... No, the... they're looking for chicks who will not offend chicks that might tune in. The reason they put chicks on the games is not for guys. They put chicks on the games to get women to watch. Ay, ay, ay. Well, that's that's bad right there. So. And, and the reason they don't have hot chicks is because they don't want women who are threatening to the chicks they're trying to appeal to. Well, there, there's a lose-lose situation. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Uh, all right, take me out with a, uh, a bonnet, bro. All right, John, here you go. <coughs> it's 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Jermaine on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's up, Tom? How you doing? I'm doing okay, Jermaine. Man, it's my first time calling. I've been listening to you about three months now. I love it. Uh, yeah, you're, man, you're an inspiration to me. Perfect. Um, my, my deal is, this is my deal. I, I, I live at home with my girlfriend and my, my two kids. I know that's, that breaks the rules. I didn't listen to you earlier like I should have. Um, but here's the deal. I, I do my, my picks at the casino. It's free picks. You win $3,000 if you get the most correct picks. Um, the deal is... When I'm watching the games, trying to get all into it, my girlfriend comes in the room, can you do this? Can you take the trash out? Can you go spend time with your daughter? Can you do this? Can you do that? It's like I have never have any time to watch the game. I mean, that gets on my, that, that aches me. That Why do you so tolerate much. that? Um, Pretty much, I mean, I, I was pretty much a loser for three or four years. So, I mean, I really didn't do what I was supposed to, so I was pretty much mooching, you can call it. Uh-huh. And what yeah. are you now? Um, right now, right now, I'm doing okay. I'm in, I'm in college, and I, I'm starting my own business, my painting business. So so that's why you tolerate her? Um, no, I love her. I love her. I mean, I, I know it's not I know it's not like it's 101. That sounds, is sounds like true romance over there. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I do love her. I mean, she, she stuck by me through a bunch of stuff that I went through in, a, in the past. So I mean, I, it's only right that I that I stick with her. But why did why can't she shut up when sports are on? Um, that's what I want to know. Why can't you just give me my 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 Sunday? That's all I ask. Just one day out of the week. Now, do you ever do? Sports. Do you ever do what the other uh, committed men do? Uh, do you ever go out to like Hooters or ESPN Zone or some sports bar just to get away? Um, I haven't done that yet, Tom. I'm thinking about it though. I go heard you meet speak the other guys like you. They're all there. I, 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 <laughs> you will find a sympathetic ear, believe me. When, when I, when I, whenever I want to leave the house, though, is she thinks I'm I'm going to see another female or well, something. Well, then, you, you, I thought this was such a wonderful relationship. She's jealous. She doesn't trust you. She annoys you during sporting events. <laughs> what is the good part again? Uh, probably the sex. <laughs> and now we're getting down to brass tacks. <laughs> I mean, but I, I, all I want to do really is just watch the games on Sunday without my son coming and ask me to play catch, without her telling me to go spend time with my six-month-old daughter, um, stuff like that. She just irks me all day long. It's ridiculous. I don't time. like. I don't like being irked, Jermaine. I'll tell you that I don't like being irked. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Joey on the Tom like his show. Hello. Hey Tom, I love your show. How you doing? I'm doing okay, Joey. Hey, good. Hey, what was the name of that one broadcaster on Channel 5, that Colombian chick? Uh, that was Claudia Trejos. That's who it was. Okay, there's one thing I remember when she when she said, uh, she was talking about Jimmy Connors or somebody, and she was saying that uh, 
Jimmy Connors is the best uh, tennis player of his ERA. And <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was reading off a teleprompter like <laughs> really bad. It was funny. Anyway, I, wonder what I, earned, I wonder what Jimmy Connors' earned run average was. <laughs> Kobe saw, <Todd>, brother. <laughs> Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. You're a beast in my heart. Oh. You're there, I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Justin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Justin. So, oh, just wanted to, you know, talk to you about Heidi Andrell with the L.A. Kings. Heidi Andrell, whose last name sounds like a banned substance in Major League Baseball. Yeah. Yeah, I was taking Andrell, uh, human growth hormone. <laughs> well, um, I like to take it. That's, she's pretty cool. So, um... I think she does a pretty decent job for being a chick doing sports. I mean, she uh, seems to know her stuff. And, you know, she got promoted or, I don't know, promoted or hired by Fox Sportsnet to uh, cover the Kings all the time now instead of just straight up working for only the Kings. Well, I'm not sure about that. I, I don't know what the deal is there, but I think uh, chance, just like the uh, announcers, uh, Bob Miller and Jim Fox are paid by the Kings, I'm imagining she is paid by the Kings as well. Oh, I'm sure she is. I mean, along with FSN. But uh, again, it's the same deal. I mean, uh, uh, it, it's not a matter of whether chicks uh, are good at it or know what they're talking about, because uh, some do and some don't. It's uh, for me a matter of whether they're hot, hot, hot. I think she's pretty attractive. I mean, I've seen. But she's her not first... on camera most of the time. Most of the time, all you see is her hand holding a microphone. <laughs> True. Well, I mean, I've seen her in person at the games, and she's well, not, she's pretty easy on the eyes, I think. Well, I'll, I'll have to check that out. She's only done about four games or something so far. But uh, we'll see. Justin, thank you for the call. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.